VIU Online presents GEC 101 English Composition, Week 1, Theoretical Lecture, Part 2, Expectations for College Writing and Critical Thinking and Argument. This lecture is presented by Dr. Laura Hills, Professor of English at Virginia International University. In part one of this lecture, we explored clustering maps, storyboards, and other techniques that will enable you to create a first draft. Of course, the writing process doesn't end there. You'll need to write, reread, and revise your draft. And revision is really where we become a better writer. If we write and don't critically look at what we've written, our writing will only get so much better. But when we engage in the feedback we receive from peers and from our instructors and from ourselves, our writing improves exponentially. So we encourage you to consider the feedback you receive very carefully before moving on to your next draft or writing assignment. Peer reviewers can help you tremendously. In this course, you will be a peer reviewer and you will receive feedback on your writing from your peers. The focus on this point is not on grammar and spelling, but rather on the ideas being presented and the organization of the writing. You will revise your writing in this course based upon feedback from your peers and instructor. Consider the broad revisions first, organization, title, introductions and conclusions. Later, you can revise your paragraphs, sentences, words, and tone, and eventually go on to grammar and spelling. So what we're encouraging you to do, at least in the initial stages of peer review and writing, is to think about your work in a large sense. Think big. Don't focus on the misspelled word. If you say to someone you've misspelled something or you have a grammatical error, that's some kind of help. But what we're trying to do is think critically about writing. That's the very small correction to make. Think about the basic questions. Is the paper arguing its point well? Is it logically laid out? Would the addition or subtraction of some elements improve the work? Think big about your writing, at least in the initial stages, and also think big about your peers' writing when you offer them feedback. Proofreading the final draft is essential. You will also become a better writer if you take time to reflect on your own writing and learning before moving on to other projects. So mull it over. Look at the feedback you get even after the grade has been given to you. You're going to be writing six papers in this course. And so you need to look at papers one, two, three, four, and five before you write number six. The idea is that you're on a journey with us this term and your writing will get better, not only because you do the assignment, but because you learn from it. So once you get the graded paper back, take the time to look at the feedback before tackling the next project. Strong writing is comprised of strong paragraphs. Effective paragraphs generally focus on one main idea encapsulated by a topic sentence. And good paragraphs are coherent. They flow and all the details fit together well. Paragraphs are the building blocks of writing. And so if you're having problems at the paragraph level, your paragraphs are perhaps not well-developed. That's the place to begin improving in individual paragraphs. Good academic writing not only presents general ideas, but also backs them up with specifics. So everything hangs together and one thing flows to the next, just like this strand of domino tiles. When the argument is well-developed, it moves just as quickly as this domino set. Many GEC 101 students are surprised that this writing course focuses so much on critical reading. You will be asked to question and to comment thoughtfully on texts, those you write, 
and those written by your classmates. This is a kind of reading that may be new to some students in this class, but this is where learning is going to happen when you read critically. And the interesting thing you will find is that reading your classmates' papers and thinking critically about them and offering them your feedback will benefit them, certainly, but you will learn more about writing in the process as well. It makes you better when you then turn your attention to your own writing. Students in this course also focus on developing and analyzing arguments. You will think critically about them. You will consider whether an argument includes appeals to hearts and values, to character, and or to logic. The ancient Greeks called these pathos, ethos, and logos. And this, of course, is the brainchild of Aristotle. You may have encountered this material in other courses you've studied, but if it is new to you, it's important for you to understand the kinds of basic appeals we make in persuasion, whether they be ethos, pathos, or logos. And we will have an opportunity in your text for you to learn more about that in this week's reading. We also focus our attention on identifying fallacies in arguments. There are many variations of fallacies, including a bandwagon appeal, false authority, a veiled threat, hasty generalization, and oversimplification. Why focus on fallacies? For one, when you're writing, you don't want to rely upon fallacies in your argumentation. You want good, solid arguments in your research papers, and you don't want to appeal to people based upon fallacies. But here's something interesting. By becoming more aware of fallacies in arguments, you will become a better consumer of texts and of products. Advertising is very often based upon fallacies, and so you will become a more savvy consumer in the process of becoming a better writer by not falling prey to fallacies. The point of this focus is for students to learn how to construct arguments that are purposeful and strong. To do this, they will need to formulate a working thesis and make strong, ethical, logical, and emotional appeals. Look at this young woman's boxing gloves. I chose this image particularly to, for you to remember something. Academic writing is strong. It is built upon that kind of strength that this woman is exhibiting here. It's not easy to knock down a good argument any more than it's easy to knock down a good prize fighter. So as you enter into academic writing with this course, remember, everything you say has to be a strong case. If you say something that's a personal opinion, you must back it up with credible sources. That's going to make a robust argument, a strong one that others cannot knock down easily. A good argument is well organized. The classical Greek method of organizing an argument begins with an introduction, offers different lines of argument, considers alternative arguments, and summarizes with a strong conclusion, just like this beautiful Greek temple. Everything is logical. You see how it all fits together. It's proportionate, it's expected, and it's extremely strong. It is a good way. However, there are other ways to organize an argument, as illustrated with this very different way to build a building. And sometimes you will make a Greek temple in your writing, and sometimes you will go for a more contemporary way, a different and unexpected fresh way of presenting your argument. Part of the art of writing is knowing when to choose which approach. The most important point is that the argument has to be convincing. And in academic writing, a good argument uses sources correctly. That will be the exercise you tackle in the final research paper that you will write for this course. 
This concludes the part two section of the theoretical lecture for week one.